Uh, and welcome to ITRA Trail Talks, where we talk to trail runners, coaches, and specialists about everything trail running. I'm your host, Jeff Campbell, and today's episode is a real pain in the ass. We're talking injuries. And luckily, I'm joined by two ladies who know more about running injuries than most. Uh, first off, we have a multi-sport athlete uh, in schemo and trail running. She's the winner of the Labrador Ultra Trail in 2021 and TDS in 2022. From Italy, we have Martina Valmasoy. Hi, Martina. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here, even though we are talking about injuries. And um, yes, um, I'm really glad to be uh, like to be able to share something I've learned uh, in the past. And uh, even though I'm pretty sure the other uh, the other guest is uh, more. Uh, has more uh, things to share than me, I'm happy to be here and uh, and talk with you. <laughs> well, uh, you. You have lots to share as well. And, and speaking of that other guest, we have another multi-sport athlete. She's a mountain adventurer, past winner of the Sky Running World Series um, uh, from the UK, but uh, joining us from the Canary Islands, we have Holly Page. Hello. Um, yeah, like Martina, it's a pleasure to be here, but also a uh, displeasure to be here um, in that <laughs> yes. we've been nominated as the, the, the people with a lot of experience in injuries. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, when I was asked to be on the podcast in January, I was like, okay, hopefully I'll be over the injuries. But um, fortunately for the listeners, the injuries are back. So um, I have plenty of experience to share. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tough topic, but it's a real one for, for every trail runner. I, I don't think there's any athlete who, um, who competes for long enough who doesn't um, end up with uh, big niggles and small ones. Um, so uh, we wanted to get some, some really experienced athletes to, to share their, their histories and, and maybe some tips for, uh, for all the runners out there. Um, but before we jump into that, uh, maybe uh, I can have each of you share a little bit about your your running bios, your your background in, in the sport, um, maybe how long you've been been competing, and so what sort of events that you tend to uh, to compete in. Um, maybe we start with uh, with you, Holly. Yeah. Um, so I grew up um, with a family who were really keen in on being in the mountains. Um, my dad was a fell runner, um, which is a quite British sport where you basically just find the fastest way to the top of the mountains and back down again. So I was brought up in this environment, um, doing lots of races as a junior, um, which got me used to running on very technical terrain um, and, and very steep. Um, so I kind of, as a youngster, would do all these, uh, like the English championships of fell running as a junior. Um, so I guess I've been training basically since I was about 10 years old. Um, and I did my first international race when I was 16, I think, um, in Italy. And and then I guess I've gradually started doing more international races to the point where I guess um, now <laughs> my life is international. I'm traveling around a lot, um, ideally going to different races um, and, and yeah, gaining lots of experience along the way and a few injuries of different categories, which we can go into afterwards. <laughs> A, a, a few scars for the memories. Uh, Plenty of scars. Mar Every star, scar has a story. <laughs> Absolutely. And how, how about you, Martina? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself as an athlete? Um, yes. Yeah, so, well, I'm a bit uh, younger uh, to the sport of uh, trail running or, well, uh, I, I can say I always run uh, a little bit, but uh, my background is uh, let's say wider into the winter sports with uh, Nordic skiing first and then ski mountaineering. Um, I've been in the Italian national team uh, uh, for ski mountaineering for over ten years, and now I'm I'm not uh, uh, in it, but um, I'm still competing um, some of the grand courses, and um, I really enjoy mostly like the long races. And um, and yes, I started uh, to get into uh, more into trail running in 2015 um, when I started working for Salomon as a photographer and content creator. And um, uh, since then, I I uh, depending on the year, I was um, I was working for Salomon, but 
but uh, I had the time, uh, of course, to start training. And even though nothing was really planned for me to, to compete during the season, I was always able to squeeze a few races in. And this year is going to be my first um, uh, year as, a, as a, an athlete and not as a content creator or photographer for Salomon. So it's, it's quite exciting. <laughs> This is your first time full time athlete. Uh, uh, that's, that's yeah. I'm, but mostly full time. But let's say okay. lot of time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, and maybe if we can talk a little bit about your your injury histories. So, uh, Martina, you had um, a really a really tough one uh, last year. Um, could could you share a little bit about that? Um. So well. Uh, of course, the the how it originated, it's uh, it's it can be seen as a tougher one, but I'm definitely I'm pretty sure it's less frustrating that uh, what uh, Holly has been going through the past uh, few years now. Um, so well, I had a, an accident climbing, which is uh, uh, unfair because I really do not climb often but um uh, so last uh, fall i was uh, climbing with a friend and i got uh, hit by um, a huge rock um and so i broke my um, i was lucky that i didn't kill myself because it could have happened um but uh, so i i broke my uh, iliac crest uh, in few places but um I have to say that, uh, to be honest, yes, it was uh, quite tough because uh, it. Uh, I had to really like. Um, I I could not uh, do much, like really staying on the couch and laying on the couch or uh, moving around the house uh, at most for two months. But then after that, uh, I I think it went. Uh, I mean, it was hard, but it went. Uh, almost smooth i would say sometimes it's the worst injuries are really the ones uh, that are coming out from uh, a little pain that you you tend to not least to care about and then it it evolves uh, in something uh, bigger or uh, you know stress fractures these kind of injuries are probably even more difficult to deal with but of course uh, all the injuries need uh, they need patience patient um to yeah to be able to to sustain them and uh, be able to fix them <laughs> yeah and, and the timing for that one was very unfortunate i know the the world championships in thailand were um were just around the corner and you were uh, yeah. slated to be with team italy um for for the competition um, how, did you realize at the time of the accident how long you would be um, you, you would be out for? Uh, well, uh, more or less, um, yes. It was not. It was never really a clear answer. Uh, you know, they were just telling me that uh, that I really had to stay on the couch for at least two months, and then uh, if everything was going correctly, then I would have been able to start moving. You know. But um, but it's always um, I really listen to the doctors and regarding the the rest time uh, and after that uh, it's really personal. Uh, of course, you need, you don't have to try to overdo things at the beginning because it's the biggest um, fo- uh, fail that you can do. But um, but then uh, I. I, as soon as I started to feel the, to see the improvements, I, day by day, I, I really made the progress, let's say. But uh, yeah, it's, it was long because I, I had it two months, uh, really like just some uh, walking in the swimming pool and, uh, and that was mostly it. <laughs> Um, uh, and I, I'm sure that's not the only injury that you've had in your career, but we'll, we'll, we'll have some time to talk about some of the, the, the other ones. Um, uh, and I'm sure as we go on, you'll, you'll have other things to share. Um, Holly, you've had, um, you've had an injury history yourself. Um, 
Uh, you underwent a reconstructive surgery um, for your foot and ankle in 2021. Um, could, could you share a little bit more about that and, and, and maybe sort of um, uh, anything else um, that uh, um, uh, that's sort of related to that? Yeah, um, I mean, I think a little, just to kind of go back a bit, a, a little bit to what Martina said in that there's different, there's, there's, different types of injuries. Um, I think there's like a trauma injury, such as what happened to Martina, where you have an accident um, and and then you have to some, like, it's kind of an unavoidable situation in a way, um, in that there's, there's something happens out of your control, you know, maybe you fall, something falls on you or whatever that might be, and you that you damage yourself. Um, I think this sort of thing obviously requires a lot of patience um, and and rest, depending on what it is, um, and then obviously re readaptation. But I think there's like a very clear process to it, um, mm. and a process which you can generally trust um, because yeah, something happened to you. you. You listen to the doctors, you do what they say, and you will, with patience, come back. Um, so I've had quite a lot of these things in the past as well. Um, and again, like I think just the last years, I became known as like Holly, the injury disaster prone runner, because, you know, things will ha <laughs> things just happen to me that don't seem to happen to other people. You know, it's me who runs into the spiky tree and then gets like my leg infected at the Golden Trail series or me who gets my head cut up in a sky race and had to be helicoptered off like various, various different things. Um, that, that was but, one week before CCC, right? Yeah, so the only reason I, I never planned to do CCC, um, I was doing a race in Zermatt um, and I was kind of scrambling up a ridge and I mean, it, I have this epic photo of the Matterhorn in the background and me with blood coming down my head. Um, it was entirely self-induced, nothing hit me, I just scrambled into a rock, um, yeah. <laughs> like I, it was above me. Um, yeah, and I'd like continued in that race for a while until I was going super dizzy. And then they were like, no, you're not going over the glacier section. You're coming down in the helicopter. Um, yeah. So because yeah. I hadn't done the downhill in that race, um, my legs were fresh. I had an entry for CCC five days later. So I was like, well, OK, let's give that a go. Um, then I ended up getting a stomach virus in that CCC. It was a terrible experience. But anyway. Um, um yeah i don't i don't necessarily condone doing that sort of thing <laughs> but sure um but yeah to be honest um when i talk about the next like what i'm going through at the moment i would take yeah. a traumatic injury <laughs> anytime because at least at least you know what the process is of like how to recover from it um yeah. i think what there's also Please share share a little bit about the, the, the current sort of injury that, that you've been working through uh, over the last uh, couple of seasons. Yeah, so that's what I'm coming on to in that I think there's also um, like overuse injuries. I've also had a stress fracture in my foot, for example, um, which um, I think it just came from doing too much and, you know, not necessarily fueling enough for the amount of training that I was doing. Um, but again, that's just a, get a question of patience and there's a process to it and you just adapt a few things and that changes. Um, what I've suffered from the last two years and counting um, is what started as a small pain in the arch of my foot. Um, and, you know, I carried on running, but I, I saw some specialists, they told, you know, they told me, oh, it's fine, you know, six out, of, it's tendon pain, but do some calf raises, do these exercises, Six out of 10 pain is normal. So of course, it depends on your pain threshold as well. <laughs> um, I continued, I was doing exactly what I was told. Um, I spent a whole year seeing different people, trying to find answers because nothing I was doing was working. Um, I think some people say, you know, you've got to trust the process, but sometimes if the, if the process doesn't work or you lose faith in the people who are defining the process, um, then you have some some difficulties. So um, yeah, 2021 was quite a tough time because I was I was really trying to to do everything I could um, to try and get over this injury. Normally I travel around a lot, so I live in a van, um, and I actually went back to live with my parents for a while just so that I could be in one place. You know, doing all the rehab, seeing specialists. 
and then I moved with my man to Chamonix so at least see diff like you know be with the Adidas team physios and the physios working there go to the gym etc spend an inordinate amount of time aqua jogging around the swimming pool um but none of this worked um as in I was still getting the same pain um and unable to run um so then I saw a an ankle surgeon who told me yes there's a problem with your tendon but there's also problems with these li with two other ligaments um and so it's never going to get better without surgery so I went for the surgery um I thought the surgery would solve the problems and it would be a long process re recovering but then you know I would be okay so I was almost happy to be having the surgery because I felt like okay you know I've got the solution um but then of course it's it's a difficult time because I was unable to to move you know I had three weeks just lying in bed completely <laughs> I could hop to the bathroom and that was it um but yeah I didn't leave the house um and um yeah and then I gradually learned to walk again gradually again learned to to run again um and but the pain was starting to come back as soon as I was doing that so I was trying to work on biomechanical issues um and yeah I think for me like I've had the last six months I've been gradually increasing my running load to being able to run three to four times a week which compared to what I used to be doing is really minimal but um but compared to doing nothing it still felt great um and and yeah and and I really felt I was on this positive trajectory um but the last two weeks something's happened and yeah I have a, I now haven't run for the last couple of weeks because the pains the pains come back um so now I'm in this this cycle again of okay who do I go to now which I'm sure lots of listeners would be able to relate to it's kind of this question of finding the right people um mm -hmm. you know I've tried some people I've tried lots of people and it doesn't seem to be working so um I think it's a case of taking control yourself a little bit um and not just blindly following what somebody said if that's not working you need to take control and and say okay I need to see somebody else or try something different um and yeah what uh, definitely something I've learned from this process um especially in the early days was not to really not to just blindly follow what somebody's told you because everybody's injury is different um and so when a physio tells me oh I see this five times a week with people well maybe they're just then just giving you like the tick box exercises and maybe they're not looking at you as a whole person um and and yeah I think trying to get advice from lots of different people and um what I found myself in the middle of lots of different specialists having to kind of coordinate them and and feedback and communication um and I think that when you have an injury, it's very important to educate yourself about the bio, like the biomechanics. How is the body functioning? What's happening? Thinking about it kind of analytically um, so that you know why you're doing certain exercises. You know, if you're working with a physio, I think it's important you don't just follow their program, but you ask them, well, why am I doing this? What is this actually going to achieve? Which not only helps your motivation for doing the exercises because there's an end goal um but helps you to understand yeah why you're doing it and how that's going to help you move efficiently again yeah no and, and sorry to hear about, about the um uh, about the downward sort of last couple of weeks in terms of your recovery um are you able to just even walk around uh pain free or is it is it more when you're running uh, or is it um, sore all the time now I mean, I can walk a bit. I'm just trying to minimize walking. I can cycle, um, but not as much as I would like. I can only, I used to go on really long bike rides and now I really have to be careful what I can, what I can do. Um, of course, this has also happened just as I was heading on a training camp with my Adidas team, um, which is a shame because, um, I mean, something I could touch on later is like the mental health aspect of being injured as well. And, as I've learned the last couple of years, being surrounded by people who are having a wonderful time <laughs> doing what you also love doing and love to talk about it. And obviously that's great. Um, yeah. But um, 
for me it's it is difficult as well to be um to be surrounded by that constantly as well yeah no it's uh absolutely holly um you, you made a a few really good points one of them was about you know listening to people and not necessarily taking everyone's um word as, as gospel getting multiple opinions um i think when a runner is injured it's a bit of a of a crisis moment um and often we'll assemble sort of our, our teams you know whether it's our regular physios or doctors or coaches um uh, for either of you, what, what's your sort of process in terms of when an injury comes up? Um, who are the people that you sort of bring in and, and, and consult and, and how do you go about weighing all, all of the sort of the advice and, and deciding sort of what is going to be the right solution for, for you in, in the moment? Well, I start first because I have less, uh, I can, uh, like, I have less experience, let's say, on this. But um, like with the injuries I had, which are three major ones, uh, let's say, because uh, this was, um, uh, well, I had an accident and the, it was the first time that these kind of things happened to me. But it it has been like quite fast um, solving it. So that's what uh, Oli was saying, that sometimes things like this, this or like you break a knee or something like that, it's the process afterward. It's, it's not faster, but at, at least um normally like you have some advices uh, that are easy to follow and uh normally you see progresses over time when uh, um other injuries um i had like uh, achilles tendonitis and it band injury um that lead up uh, to um, a knee inflammation on the opposite leg um like I spent years uh, trying to deal with this, um, trying to solve these kind of injuries. And I think the first pro the first persons that you uh, you ask uh, at the beginning, as we we know a lot of other athletes, you know, uh, that has had the same kind of problems. I I think that the first reaction is to ask advices to our friends and. Um, and uh, I would ask, I was asking, you know, where did you go to to fix this? Which kind of exercises were you doing? And then, of course, uh, uh, after getting some advices, then you have to see a specialist. But sometimes you have to see many of them because, you know, n none of, no one has a, a, a clear answer or, or like an answer that might be good for you because uh, otherwise uh, all injuries uh, would have been uh, so easy to, to deal with if uh, you have a clear answer or a clear strategy to to fix a problem. So, uh, yeah, for what I can say, I think it's, uh, yeah, normally I ask uh, some friends first and then um, I go to see my physio and uh, and then uh, i see if i if i can do something specific in terms of uh, exercises in terms of uh, therapies and um yeah yeah i mean just as an example um i've been at a bit of a loss the last couple of weeks of you know what do i do next and i was talking with one of my teammates um who really recommends a team of specialists close to where she lives in in catalonia um so that's my next step um, when I leave this training camp, I'll be heading there to go and work with them because um, I know that they're going to be, I hope they're going to be good. They've worked with lots of trail runners in the past and that's my little beam of hope <laughs> um, for, that I can maybe get through this injury. Yeah, it's, it's important to have a light at the end of the tunnel to, to point your van at. I, re I really think there is, I really think it is um, because if you, if you lose that hope, um, it's kind of pointless, you know? Um, you start to think, well, what's the point in doing all these exercises? You have to see some some progress. Um, but then saying that, I think it's also very important um, that if somebody has given you a program, you do have the patience um, and the tenacity to, to keep going at that. Um, like 
every day I'm doing an hour, two hours of rehab exercises and have been for the last <laughs> years. Um, yeah. You know, it's just like, but you start to see improvements. Um, maybe at first you think, oh no, it's not gonna, it's not working, but then you realize, oh, actually, no, I'm standing differently or, you know, getting stronger on this side or whatever it might be. Um, so definitely requires a lot of patience and commitment. Um, yeah. But yeah. I think that no problem is unsolvable. Might yeah. take time, yeah. but um, that's what I'm telling myself anyway. <laughs> it's just, a, yeah. just the different yeah. challenges. You, you mentioned patience a, a lot there. Um, both of you are elite athletes and, and running is, uh, is part of your livelihood. Um, uh, how much pressure do you feel to get back maybe sooner than, than you're ready? Um, and how do you sort of, um, uh, how, how do you balance that in terms of um, giving it enough time that you're, you're definitely um, f f fully recovered? For me, um, my sponsors have been, you know, really great at saying, don't come back until you're ready, um, you know, take the time you need. Um, and it's probably been me who's also, in, you know, somewhat impatient and just wanting to get at least my life back <laughs> um, because my life is hiking in the mountains, running, racing, training, being around friends who run. Um, and so, um, yeah, I think the pressure is probably more coming from me. Um, but I think with a long term injury, such as what I have at the moment, um, there does start to cr like have some doubt creeping in of just wanting to know, is there an end to this? Will it come right or not? Because um, there's, I have lots of other things that I could be doing in life. You know, um, before I started focusing so much on running, um, I was you know, I was working in Africa and international development, um, really like what I thought was kind of a, a meaningful career. And I and um, and the last two years I've been working with the Bureau of Humanitarian Assistance in the US, um, which really helps to put some perspective on everything. You know, I'm there moaning that I can't walk, but at the same time doing research on, you know, how we can um, increase food supplies to Yemen, for example. Um, and it's like, okay, my life's not that bad. Um, I think having some perspective is is important in that. Um, you know, we have one life and um, how is the best use of like, I wanna use my time efficiently and I also want to use my talents efficiently. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's important to make sure that um, you, you don't just have like running as your sole thing in life um, because that puts so much pressure on you. Um, you know, if if your only income is comes from winning races and then you get injured, well, that's going to be difficult. Or if you have some kind of career ending injury um, and then you have nothing, nothing left to go to, um, then I think that's really difficult. And so, yeah, I think it's very important to make sure, especially like younger athletes, to make sure that they're really prioritizing studies, having a, um, you know, a potential career in something else and not just um, focusing on trying to become a professional athlete. Because I think that the sport of trail running is changing a lot and it's going to change a lot over the next 10 years, for example. And I think a lot of people see this kind of idolizing this like professional athlete life um but your professional athlete life only lasts as long as your body is physically capable of performing um yeah. and and so that's only it's only going to be a finite amount of time and i think it's very important to yeah have this wider perspective and think okay what will i do after that and make sure that you're you're ready and making sure that running isn't your identity because if that's taken away from you, then you've kind of lost who you are, whereas it can just be like a small part of who you are. Um, and of course, then it hurts to lose that small part of you. Um, but um, you've still got lots of other things, you know, keeping you fulfilled. And, and from a mental health perspective, uh, an injury can, can give you a little bit of time to focus uh, or, or energy and, and time and attention on other things as you are sort of re rehabilitating. Uh, re rehab does take time um, for, for some injuries, but um, uh, you know, the, the, the time that's freed up from, from training and competition can be 
directed towards to, towards other things, and that can kind of help deal with some of the, the maybe the negative mental health of impacts of of losing what's otherwise a, a part of your your day to day life. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really important to try and still find something that gives you that sounds cliched, but like that sense of flow, which like when I'm running, I, I don't listen to music or podcasts or anything. Um, I'm just just me and running. Um, and so when that's taken away, you kind of lose that time alone with your own thoughts. And I think it's still important to carve out that time for yourself. And for me, I, I like to play some music as well. Um, like I have a violin and the piano in my van. <laughs> um, so sometimes that helps to, you know, get that still, like, get that sense of flow back um and and try and replace the some of the endorphins that you get from running um but yeah i think nothing fully replaces running really everybody who's a runner knows that <laughs> i think also yeah for me it's uh yeah it's what um holly said i i know it a little bit less now because um i haven't been uh considered like a professional athlete uh, all this time so for me it was same as uh, Oli said it, it's more the pressure that you put on yourself uh, rather than uh, the sponsor um, or at least uh, for me uh, a few years ago when I had the, the IT band for example that took a, a long time to heal and um, still uh i wasn't like racing professionally in summer but uh, uh i had to run with the athletes uh, to be able to work so for me it was a, a big deal because if i wasn't able to run i wasn't able to work and so um, that was the the like from there came the pressure and uh, i was really lucky that at that time um my boss and i mean the team uh, was able to to find solution to made me go in places without much of a, uh, like without making me run so much and um, and uh, but I was still able to uh, to work let's say and uh, at the moment of course I, it's also like um, yes I I finally have a spot in the team and um, I feel like I. I should be doing uh, uh, something more probably, but also I, as I know myself, I know what I've been doing in the past. I really fear um, overdoing things. And so I try to stay patient even into, uh, even though I know I, I don't have so much time to prepare for the first race and I don't feel ready at the moment, but I don't want to try to rush things because I know that maybe it's good for two months, but then the problems might come, you know? So it's also like knowing about your history and uh, knowing how much training and races you can sustain. I'm not someone who loves to race that much uh, as Holly. I really, I, <laughs> I, I really like to, to, just pick some races to have a goal, but I, I really could not um, race every weekend. Um, but um, also what I learned myself is that um, to try to be the healthiest in the sport, um, I need to be doing something else and not just running uh, in terms of training. I really need to ride my bike uh, because that's, um, I really don't like to do workouts at the gym and stuff like that um and so i've seen that uh, riding it's uh, it has helped me there like in terms of strength and um to to make me do the volume i was not able to sustain only with running and uh, in the past three years despite the last injury that it didn't it was not my fault even though it's not a fault of anyone <laughs> like an injury but uh it just came. Um, I wasn't. I, I haven't been injured in the past three years, so uh, I think that was. I found uh, like what's working for me at least. For me at least. Okay. Okay. 
Um, that, that IT band injury that you were talking about, I mean, that's a very common one for a lot of runners. Uh, how long did, did, was that persistent for you and, and how did it eventually sort of go, go away? Well, it was um, really frustrating um, because it started in the fall of, um, um, like, I think it was uh, 2016. And um, and then uh, during winter, you know, I, I'm not running, I just ski. And uh, when I was skiing, I didn't have problems. Um, and I was rehabbing all winter long, like doing exercise, specific exercises, going to the physio. I was really trying to do everything I could to heal uh, this problem. And, uh, but uh, it was, it was insane because like the first run I did in, in April, so from November uh, until April, um, like after 18 minutes uh, running, I had the same problem I had in November. So uh, there was super frustrating because like it felt uh, that I've been just wasting time. time. And uh, well, <laughs> I, Honestly, I don't know what worked at the end because you try sometimes at, at some point you try so many things at the same time that uh, eventually um, the problem disappear, but you don't know uh, how, like, I don't know if it was like months of, um, uh, of rehab, months of uh, strength training, specific strength, tra strength training. If uh, I, I'm pretty sure, like I have done some um, uh, some shock weights, and uh, I think uh, those helped, even though at the moment you don't feel like they are helping at all. But uh, that's what uh, uh, normally, yes, they said that they should work um, after like few weeks uh, because they help speed up recovery, and. Um, so I don't know. I just know that at some point I the IT band was healed, but uh, I got um, uh, like um, the opposite knee, the, the knee of the opposite leg. Um, I started to have pain under the patella. <laughs> and so uh, probably because you, without even knowing it, you run weird because you try to like, to, to think, you overthink wh when running, you know, while running because you want to have a perfect stride and sometimes you don't run relaxed and uh, and you fo you focus mainly on the on where you have the problem and then you kind of like uh, you miss uh, like the, the fitness in the rest of the body, let's say. And so... Um, yeah, it took uh, some other months to heal the knee, um, um, but uh, I don't really know, like, there was nothing, like, that I can say, okay, I did this therapy, and it worked, and I healed, because it, it finally um, it kind of disappeared out of nowhere, but I really don't know how, <laughs> to be honest. Just to add to yeah. what Martina said about... Um, you know, you have an injury on one side and then when you've got over that, then you get an injury on the other side. I think that's where it can also be super important to be patient. Um, I mean, of course, you've trained really hard to get fit and ready for races for that season or whatever. Um, but I think rather than kind of having this mindset of going race to race, you want to really think like long term health. It's easier said than done. But big picture. Um, like, for example, now I think a lot of my problems came from 2017. I had some accident in, in the Alps um, and tore my ligament in my knee. And I think I came back too soon from that and started overcompensating. And now I'm stuck with a biomechanical problem, which I'm <laughs> struggling to solve, you know, six years later. Um, yeah. So I think really like, you know, taking the time you need, it might seem crazy and you're worried you're going to lose fitness but as soon as your body is functioning properly again you can gain that fitness back 
uh, I, I've, you know, rolled an ankle on one side and as soon as I can run on it, even with a little bit of pain, get back on the trails. And then before you know it, your hammy on the other side is not firing because it's trying to compensate and protect the, the, the body or trying to sort of maintain speed, even though the, the, the stride is not being natural. So, um, I, I think that, uh, that's a lesson that a lot of runners can learn. Um, in terms of training, right? So you're both elite athletes. Um, you, you do have to train a lot. Um, there's a certain amount of volume and intensity. It's different for every runner, but th th that goes into sort of performing at your best. Um, but I find that there's, there can be a bit of a fine line between what is sort of the optimum amount and what can be overdoing it and can lead to overuse injuries or burnout. Um, do you have any sort of any tips or thoughts on sort of how to know where that line is for yourself? When you're trying to perform it, um, it can be easy to get into this trap of like, you know, more is more and more is better. And especially if you are doing doing well and you're starting to think, well, you know, you just keep doing what you're doing. Um, and that can be too much and not taking this step back and like, um, you know, thinking long term. Mm -hmm. um, and um i think like as um athletes a lot of us are kind of have this type a personality um you know <laughs> objective driven um and a lot of i don't have a coach but i do like make my own training program um but i think that sometimes it's very important to well it's always very important to um understand your body and like know what feels right or not and not just because we're dedicated and um and and we want to achieve and um we will you can you know you can just blindly follow this training program from the coach and you think oh no no i can't miss that session because the coach will see i've missed it and they might think i'm weak or you know it might affect my race um you know i think it's really important to to listen to your body every day and you know if your body's saying no like screaming i don't want to do this or there's a reason why you know maybe you need to just take a day off or maybe you're getting ill or something like that um and so i mean it only comes with time but really getting trying to get in tune with your body's needs um and it also means that you become aware of what's either like a tiny niggle of course we all <laughs> especially with age we start with you know we're never niggle free but it's knowing okay what's what's actually wrong when do i need to stop or what's just a tiny thing that will go you know by next week um so yeah just having that self-awareness and and taking the time um to kind of do some self-analysis as well um really helps to stop you doing too much um but but yeah also a bit like martina um i like to do quite a lot of biking um i don't ski like her but i spend quite a lot of time on the bike and i really think that Doing something else, um, not just running, helps to, to yeah get enough volume in um, to do well, but not having quite the same stress on your body. Um, I mean, we noticed that a lot of the uh, trail runners and especially kind of sky running, mountain running um, athletes spend the winter on skis, um, like Martina, um, and then you know come April they're starting to run again, but they've had five months of of not having that pounding impact on the body. And I think that's really beneficial. So if you yeah. don't have snow, yeah. get a bike, I say. <laughs> or swim. Yeah. I'm a terrible yeah. swimmer, um, but some people like swimming. Yes, so I agree with Hot. Um, I think it's important to really balance um, and to know your history too, because uh, sometimes um, I see people maybe uh, that change work or that they finally got a sponsorship and they changed from doing uh, something to do too much. Um, also, this is uh, maybe you can, you know, the trap is that uh, sometimes uh, the problems are not coming right away. But, um, mm. uh, you know, I've had lots of, I've also seen, you know, you, you, it's important to see also what's happening around you. And sometimes you see a, a really performing athlete, uh, really successful, that is like crashing races for two years in a row that doesn't seem to be fatigued or 
like uh, stressed or like really enjoying what he's doing. And then uh, all of a sudden, like one year, there's many injuries coming and uh, it doesn't seem to be like easy to find a way out. And I've seen this happening many times already. And so it it really like gives me a, a perspective on like, okay, you can, everything can go like in the right direction until it's not going in that direction anymore. So even if, even when you feel really good, don't forget that your body still needs um, to rest. Even if you are in your top shape, um, it's important that once a week you kind of take a day off or like every two weeks, uh, depending on how your body is trained, but you need to give like time to heal to your body. Uh, you need to take care of your illness when, uh, because I, I've seen lots of people just doing the training, uh, even when they are like suffering from a cold or other problems. And it's always better to take, uh, one extra day off than doing one more training in, in the long term, because of course, uh, when you know, you are excited, you want to do more. And especially when you are feeling really well, you kind of feel like you are losing fitness. If you, if you skip one day or maybe one whole week because, uh, you got sick, but, uh, at the end, this, like, if you have enough, enough patience to just like keep calm and, and wait until you are like good to go again, um, your body will, uh, will thank you later, let's say. And uh, yes, uh, as Holly said, I think it's important to to have not, to maybe not only running, but just find different activities. Also to like, you still, you are still training, but you are training uh, differently. You know, you train different muscles. Uh, for me, like riding my bike, it's, it's really great because uh, really the pounding is what is uh, killing me because I, I don't do much of strength training. And so I, I really feel that I need this strength training from the bike. And also, um, maybe I don't really like to do sessions on the bike. I like to travel a lot. And so this also like give me a sense of um, like freedom. It's more like traveling um, with my bike. And, and so also that's a kind of, um, a reset button for the mind. So you're not feeling like you're constantly training. Um, so I think it's, it's a lot about being honest and kind with yourself because most of the time it's, it's what's hard because, um, if you have a coach, it's difficult to find someone you trust. And if you don't have it, it's difficult to find the, the balance within what you would like to do and what you think you have to do. And um, so uh, I am a sales coach as well. I had mm. a friend that uh, helped me uh, last year just to, to find uh, um, like, um, like to pick the right intervals to do on my schedule, let's say. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm thinking to find a coach, but it's also like, I'm really not an easy person to coach because I, I really like to do different things and I don't always like to be just training. You know, I really like to be out with my bike. If I want to go five hours, I go five hours. If I want to go two hours, I go two hours. So I, I need to be kind of flexible, but, um, Somehow, I think uh, it's good to have uh, uh, a good help, uh, but also it's important to trust the person because otherwise, uh, if you find a coach, but then you don't really trust uh, trust uh, what um, he's giving to you, it's difficult because uh, there's always a confliction between what you think you will have to do and what he says you had to do. And so, yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah, no, for sure. Um... And now those those types of injuries, the ones that sort of sneak up on you because you've been 
training too much or tra training through through um, a, another injury. Um, do you have any sort of golden rules in terms of knowing when it's something that really does require a few days off versus something where you can still go at it, but you're just a bit sore and um, and power through? Like what, what for either of you really sort of sets off the alarms in terms of a certain type of pain or a certain type of uh, of soreness i mean for me if something's like a new pain and i can't identify what it's come from and um, that's when i would go and seek some expert help or advice just before it becomes something um something bigger um but i mean as martina said before about you know knowing your history it could be something that you've come across before and so therefore you might actually know what the answer is um but yeah it's a coming back to this just self-awareness thing and also i think not just thinking about you know not just you have a new injury you don't just look back through your training log and go okay what did i do wrong or did i you know did i do too much in that week or whatever it might be um i think it's kind of having this wider comprehensive look at yourself as well so yeah. you know did something happen in your in your work life did were you more stressed were you going through something emotional like family problems or were you grieving or you know all sorts of different things which um impact your body and this especially a lot of people listening will be like working full time as well as training and if you've got a really difficult week at work um then look at your training and don't just do the, exactly the same um, because, you know, your body, the the stress hormones which are developed um, through training are also the same hormones that are developed when you're when you're going into a stressful meeting or you have a job interview or whatever it might be. Um, and I think it's really important to take that into account. Or if you know you've not slept well for the last few nights, then don't try and do a really hard session when you're like physically tired because it will just come back to bite you at some point. Um, and again, yeah. like on that kind of comprehensive look, I think um, that the nutrition as well is super important. Um, a bit like Martina said about having been in the sport for a long time and you see people come and go and people doing very well, but perhaps under fueling, for example, and it's it's not sustainable. Um, really, I think it's. I, th I think there's a lot more talk about it in the community now about how important you know fueling is. Um, but from in, I think also when you're injured and you have to take time off, it can be easy to think, oh, I'm not doing any exercise now, so I should restrict my food intake, for example. Um, but you know, your body's trying to heal, and I think it's really important to to feed it. Um, and also, you know you've you've got something taken away from you that you love so running for example you can't run for six weeks um don't take away the food you love too <laughs> um you know um still eat you can eat chocolate and ice cream if you want to um and i think people worry about for example putting on weight in those six weeks so what you know we're long distance runners you you will lose it once you can train again um i mean i've just had two years of not being able to exercise like I would like to. And and I've seen my body change in ways that I'd never experienced before. <laughs> um, you know, like I put on quite a lot of weight and it's, I mean, everything's relative, but for me it was noticeable. Um, but I just said to myself, look, this is part of the process. And once I can, once I can get back to being normal, like my normal exercising life, like, or perform, like performance level running, then, you know, that's when you can think, okay, um, maybe I can lose a little bit. Um, but yeah, I really think it's just, a, it's import, really important to be fueling properly, like including, especially even when injured. Yeah, I think it's it's yeah, really important take it as, um, you know, when I got injured the last time, I, I just, I was just sleeping a lot and eating a lot and just take advantage of this time uh, to like to really um okay i wasn't training but i at least what i could do it was taking care of my body so i was trying to eat well but i was eating a lot because i was always hungry also because i mean <laughs> your metabolism doesn't really change within a, a week <laughs> that you're just and actually being at home it doesn't really help because of course uh, 
you are really close to <laughs> your uh, fridge. Yeah, and uh, like your mom is always coming up. Uh, well, I was living at home, so it's always coming up with something to eat, and so that doesn't help. But uh, you really need to be cool with it and just uh, eat all that you want to eat and. Uh, Eventually, yes, you will you will heal the injury, and then once you will st will restart, of course, then you are a little heavier than uh, you were used to. But then, as Oli said, I mean, if you are meant to be an endurance athlete, uh, that weight will will go, and uh, uh, it's much more important to take care of your body than try to restrict uh, restrict it uh, also because like you know especially for bone injuries tendon injuries the food is really important so if you want to heal you need to eat <laughs> so and uh, and it's and has to be like a thing to remember also with training i see so much people like stressing on how like what they had to eat and uh, how much and uh, like which kind of food they had to prioritize um yes you can like select and you can see what's working best for you or or, or not um none of us is uh people that uh, will go every day to mcdonald's but mm. i i rather uh, advise you to go every day to mcdonald's and eat a, a cheeseburger rather than not eating at all so i i will suggest you to go every day to mcdonald's rather than uh, skipping a meal every day you know um because uh, what's really important is to first eat be sure you fuel enough yourself and then uh after you make sure you are you are eating um not just enough but like really what your body is asking you to eat at least uh mm -hmm. then you can start to stress about like what and if uh, some of course then you can see like which kind of food is better for you which kind of food is like better to eat before your training after your training but the main thing i think we have to keep in mind is that food is necessary is necessary to to move forward and so you need to be eating if you want to be training otherwise uh, it's uh, um it won't last forever like uh, your fitness or or your health no i, I think it's such a good point uh, it, we, we think about fueling when competing and fueling during training but fueling for recovery um uh, from injuries i don't think people a lot of runners would necessarily make that connection, um, uh, but I, I think it's really true. And, and Holly, I really liked your point about um, sort of some of the sources for um, for some overuse injuries um, just not being within the four corners of your training log. And um, you know, I, I am a believer that uh, you know, your your sort of overall body can take a, a certain amount of stresses um, from from all parts of its uh, of its existence and, and part of that can be running part of that can be family life part of that can be if you have an office job or some other type of work um, and um, sometimes it doesn't show up on the, the training log but it can really uh, impact sort of the, the running and um, and our body's ability to perform I think it's a really good point um we're we're kind of getting towards the end of uh, of our time any other sort of tips or advice that you'd have for um for runners maybe even sort of beginner runners um about um staying healthy um, any anything else that they could uh, keep in mind for um for, for just running running healthy i have some advice for uh, um people who are not injured but are talking to people who are injured this is just from my experience. Um, so, for example, every time I post something on social media about my injury, which I've never actually fully explained to the followers on Instagram or whatever, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm inundated with very well-meaning people, like super well-meaning people trying to help. Um, yeah. But, you know, I'll get long messages where they describe their own injury to me um 
and they tell me, oh, I, I totally understand how, I, how you're feeling. I feel the same about mine. And I guess in some ways, like it's a little bit like when somebody's grieving, um, you know, you shouldn't say to somebody like, I know how you're feeling because everybody is going through their own personal thought, thought process. And, um, and I think it's, it's, it's lovely to be helpful, but sometimes maybe just be aware of like, are you helping that person or are you just telling them about yourself um, or com or telling them that your cousin's auntie's grandmother once also had an ankle problem? Um, it's like, okay, I, I think it's just important not to um, compare injuries. Um, or for example, people have approached me saying, you know, you'll be through, you'll get through this soon. Um, giving me examples of other people who've had operations and come back to perform like at a top level. Well, not every operation is the, is the same, you know, everybody's got different kind of complex history and, and injuries. And so I think, although everybody is well-meaning, I think it's just important um, to either take the time to understand what that person's going through or what their problem is, and then think, can I offer some advice? Um, but actually sometimes some of the, the best thing to say to somebody is just like, that must be really hard, what you're going through. Just kind of empathize rather than saying, you'll come back stronger, be positive, just, you can do it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know, thank you. <laughs> but um, yeah. I, I I agree with Holly, yeah. but also it's it's about how how you are. I think, <clears throat> and I think I I am pretty similar in uh, in the approach and and uh, just like even in training, you know, if you have a coach or if you have someone that is like if a if like a training didn't go as planned and like that they are still like, ah, no, but that was still great. Like, uh, you got this. And it's like, no, that was not good. <laughs> then eventually at, at uh, some other training will be better. But I think um, I am someone uh, as well that needs to be pushed in the right way or in the way that I like to be pushed. And uh, as Holly said, sometimes it's more... Um, like if you really have like i don't know i i knew the kind of like the problem that holly had it's like okay i did i've seen this doctor he made me do this and it helped maybe you can try and that's like just a clear advice if you want to do it or not just is up to you and i think i value that's helpful. That. Yeah. yeah but i don't necessarily uh value or i not necessarily care if someone else has had the same problem, but then um, I don't have to know that uh, you went through through it in a week or in six months. Uh, like if you have something, some advice, I'm really happy to to take that advice. If it's just to share, uh, like um, a pain, let's say, <laughs> it's um, of course social media is great, but we have. Uh, normally our friends to share pain with <laughs> uh, hopefully and so and so yes yeah, sometimes it's better uh, not sending a message than sending a message I think yeah although well, saying <laughs> that like I mean there's two sides to it it's also like I think it's also nice sometimes to to you know, spend time, like last summer, for example, I was in Chamonix of UTMB week and one friend hooked me up with a friend of hers who was also injured and could only do a short walk. So we went for a walk together as two injured runners suffering through UTMB week. Um, oh, and that was actually, it was, it was really helpful because we could both like chat through, you know, like our, our problems or whatever. Um, and so that can, it can, it can be really useful to find people to talk with. Um, but yeah, I think sure. it's just being like strategic with uh, like giving some um, useful advice is good, but not yeah. if you don't know the person, don't necessarily assume you you know what they're going through or what their problems are. Um, sure, or, or ask if they want advice. Yeah, because well, some exactly. people may, that's the thing. Some people may, yeah. they may be looking for it, and others do not need yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, and also if somebody's like 
injured like they have had a trauma injury and they you know they they're struggling with mobility for example or if they've got a long-term injury um you know don't that doesn't define that person you know to find you don't need to just be constantly like oh how's your ankle or how's your knee or this i mean it's nice to ask but maybe that person wants to talk about something different <laughs> um and so i think it's kind of good to ask yeah. do you want to talk is now a good time to talk about it or shall we talk about something different um because especially if you're on crutches for example you know the people constantly saying oh what happened what happened we haven't right. talked much in the past uh, months uh, holly i think <laughs> because <laughs> we all know that uh, we know that it's not nice to talk about the the same process uh, all the yeah. time i mean <laughs> i got to the point last year where people would ask like oh how is it going and i would just burst into tears because I, yeah. it wasn't going yeah. well and I just didn't want to talk about it but you know yeah. I was doing super yeah. interesting work um, and I would have happily yeah. talked about that or you know talk about what's in the news or <laughs> something um, but sometimes it can just get a little bit too much you know like talking constantly about or reminding that person of um, what they can't do or their injury or whatever. For sure. Um, well, listen, I, I want to thank both of you for, um, for, for joining and for, for sharing your stories. Um, it's been a really interesting um, conversation. Um, before we sign off, are there any sort of projects or upcoming adventures that you wanted to, to tell the trail running community about? Anything interesting that you guys, uh, either of you are up to? Well, I was about to go bike because my van is in the south of Spain. So I was going to get a boat with my bike across to Morocco um, and go cycling around. But now my injury came back. So <laughs> instead, I'm going on a rehab camp. Um, but hopefully lots of adventures will come. Um, that's what I've been missing, going on adventures. And me and I feel like me and Martina should go on some bike bike trips yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yes. We have yes, the same yeah, spirit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we like. Yes, we have to. Um, we have to plan something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about you, Martina? Anything big coming up? Uh, well, uh, yes, I I should uh, try to qualify for the World Championship again. <laughs> so um, I will race Transvulcania this year, which I'm really excited and scared about it. Um, but um, I just stopped skiing, let's say as the winter wasn't great but bef but it was good for because uh, it was difficult to run it was like not optimal to run and um and so yes i will try mm -hmm. to do a good race at transvulcania even though it's not exactly what i'm good at uh but it's, it's nice to be challenging um uh, myself with something different and uh so i hope this month it will be uh like not too like hard but not too hard and that i will find somehow um the strength to finish this transvulcania because at the moment i don't feel like i'm able to to finish 70k but um but yes i i'm excited to start this year trying to um trying to stay healthy and uh, and to then sustain all the rest of the season well, enjoy that race, and um, th thanks again for, for both of you for, for joining us. Um, uh, as we wrap up, I just want to thank uh, everyone who helps uh, bring this podcast to life uh, for each episode. Um, so thanks today for our guest, uh, Martina and Holly, uh, to our amazing producer uh, and editor, Sam Hill at Hill Adventures. Uh, you can find all of the Intra Trail Talks episodes on the Intra YouTube channel and on Spotify. Uh, and for more information on the International Trail Running Association, you can visit itra.run. Uh, you can become an ITRA member and gain access to all services for only eight euros a year. Uh, you get access to your ITRA score, statistics, rankings, and the ability to purchase insurance uh, for only 49 euros a year for, for your trail running. Uh, so that's it for me. Um, happy trails, everyone. Take care.